Now we are going to be shifting over to AWS. Uh, they will be presenting their open footprint plans. A uh, little bit about the speakers. Liz Dennett is the lead solutions architect for the OSDU energy data platform, where she works with energy customers to slay da data silos to fuel innovation. And Liz brings over a decade of energy industry experience, including an MS and PhD in geoscience. Marilyn Gregory is a global account manager at Amazon Web Services, working in the energy business unit and is Amazon's focal point for Open Footprint Forum. Marilyn has 16 years of experience in strategy, consulting with the energy sector, and has advised over 300 businesses in the industry on growth, diversification, and MSA. M and A, sorry. Um, so I will turn it over to the both of you. I believe uh, we have a recording. So if I can request that uh, everyone please mute um, your <clears throat> audio so that we do not have feedback and we will roll it. Thank you. Thank you everyone for joining us today. My name is Liz Dennett and I'm with AWS. Today, I'm joined by Merlin Gregory, and we're going to walk through what Amazon and AWS are doing to focus on sustainability. Now, as we move through this presentation, we'd like to invite everyone to ask their questions via the chat function as we're presenting. If we're not able to answer them now, we're happy to share our contact information and follow up offline. So with that, I would like to go ahead and hand it over to Merlin. Thanks, Liz. Hi, everyone. I'm Merlin. I'm a global account manager with AWS, and I look after our relationship with Shell. First off, I just want to say I'm really honored to be here speaking at the Open Footprint Forum. It's an initiative that's very, uh, that AWS is very proud to be part of. So to start with, I'm going to talk a little bit about how Amazon approaches sustainability, and then I'll hand over to Liz, and she's going to talk us through some of the technology that we're developing to help our customers solve the energy transition. So I think we all feel a lot of pressure to be sustainable, first and foremost. We recognize as a world, if we don't evolve the way that we're treating the planet, it's not going to be here in the same way for our kids and our kids' kids. It's a big, hard problem, as we all know. We've been working on this for years, but put a substantial stake in the ground more than a year ago with the Climate Pledge, where we pledged to be carbon zero by 2040, which is 10 years ahead of the Paris Climate Agreement, and to be using 100% renewable energy in our facilities by 2030. So we're making a lot of progress there. First of all, a lot of companies have chosen to join the Climate Pledge. In fact, we just announced 20 more. It's great because we all have to be in it together. It won't work if just a few companies do it. We all have to do it. Um, so last year, we announced a new $2 billion fund, the Climate Pledge Fund for renewable projects that will change the speed with which we can all get to net zero. Since then, we've announced investments in Rivian, Carbon Cure Technologies, Infinium, Pachama, Redwood Materials, Turntide Technologies, and Zero Avia. And in order to meaningfully reduce the amount of greenhouse gases being produced, low carbon solutions need to be developed in all sectors of the global economy. Um, the Climate Pledge Fund will invest in companies in multiple industries with an initial focus on transportation and logistics, energy generation, storage and utilization, manufacturing and materials, circular economy and food and agriculture. Companies of all sizes and stages will be considered from pre-product startups to well-established enterprises. So just coming onto the renewables front, we've also made a lot of progress here. We're the world's largest corporate buyer of renewable energy now, and last year's amount was 50% higher than the previous record for a year. Contract now to be 100% powered by renewables by 2025. Uh, so that's five years earlier than our original target. Our push to use more renewable energy is one step on our path to net zero carbon by 2040. And to achieve these goals, we focus on four complementary areas. Uh, one, increasing energy efficiency in our facilities and equipment, continuous innovation in our data centers, 
advocacy at the global, federal and state levels to create a favourable environment for renewable energy and working with various power providers around the world to increase the availability of renewable energy. Amazon has over 187 renewable energy projects that have the capacity to generate 6,900 megawatts and deliver more than 20 million megawatts of, uh, megawatt hours sorry, of energy annually. If you look at what we're doing with Shell, our latest renewable energy investment, the Amazon Shell HKN offshore wind project is Amazon's largest single site renewable energy project to date. The wind farm is operated by the Crosswind Consortium. It's going to be operational by 2024 and will have an overall capacity of 759 megawatts. This will supply the electrical grid covering the Netherlands without government subsidies. Amazon's purchasing over 50% of that, so a total of 380 megawatts to power our operations in Europe. So, in my opinion, the energy industry, consumers of energy, and the world are much better off with companies like ours helping to be part of the solution to transition to net zero than to take our ball and go home. So we're genuinely really committed to trying to help our energy customers be more energy efficient. A recent study by 451 Research found that AWS data centers um, si run significantly more energy efficiently than enterprise sites due to the efficiency programs that we run. And 451 also found that AWS performs the same tasks with an 88% lower carbon footprint. A lot of R&D is going into renewable and clean energy at Amazon, and we think that we can be a real accelerant for those organizations and companies to get to that point that we all want to be at. We want to try and help encourage and inspire the ecosystem to invent alongside us. And so far, that's been great. If you just look at the collaboration we have with 3M and some of the products they're building that can help both us and others. But it's going to take a village and it's going to be a lot of hard work. But it's a very important focus for us. So if you look at our data centers, we consume a fairly small amount of water relative to a lot of other facilities, but we've worked on a lot of invention in how we consume water so that even in our largest data center, it consumes the same amount of water as 25 US households. There's a lot of invention happening everywhere around this. There's just a lot of ways that energy companies are using AWS in this area, and we're still at the relative start. So with that, I'm going to hand over to my colleague Liz to discuss some of the data problems that we're trying to solve. Thanks for that, Merlin. So as we start to talk about the technology stack, um, it's also important to call out that sustainability is really a data problem at its core. One of the things that AWS is doing with services like Amazon Data Exchange and the Open Data Program is providing access to data to address a range of sustainability challenges. Now, we have services, we have over 200 fully featured services out of all the clouds. We have the most services and the most features within those services. And those include things like IoT, Direct Connect, Kinesis, Transfer Gateway, and many, many others. They're designed to get your data in and out of the cloud, which can help to align to some of the sustainability points that Merlin was talking about earlier. And as I mentioned with data, you also have access to a diverse array of data ready for you to use. Sharing data on the cloud allows you to spend more time on analysis rather than acquisition, munging your data, getting it ready, um, which is one of the common themes we've seen with AWS's commitment to the OSDU data platform as well. Open Data Program makes it easy to find data sets made publicly available through AWS services. The data exchange lets data partners offer data sets for sale on AWS. Now, Earth on AWS highlights geodata solutions. Use cases include things like using weather data to predict wind turbine output, which we actually have customers actively doing to optimize their renewable energy use cases. Amazon Sustainability Data Initiative hosts these public data sets and works very closely with scientific and the research community to acquire more of it, which can then be used to both fuel research and commercial objectives. All right, so I teed up some of our services. I wanna talk about a few of the domains that we're working with customers to really fuel some of their sustainability initiative. So let's take a brief look at some of the most commonly used services in building sustainability solutions. The first one are measurements. So AWS IoT or Greengrass can be used to gain a true view of the world and to control assets. Measurements can also include control. IoT can be a two-way design. 
for instance, making real-time adjustments to wind farm based on collected sensor data. We also have storage. Amazon S3 data lakes power a wide range of customer data initiatives and have the power to store, transform, and manage proprietary and public data in a very durable and secure format. In terms of analytics and being able to address questions and business and public challenges with this data, Amazon Redshift and Athena allow you to easily query and ask questions of data so that you don't just have the data, but you can gather meaningful insights from that. And if you wanna look at your data and see where some of the trends are, Amazon QuickSight is designed to dashboard data and make, make it actionable in real time. Now, now that we've laid out some of those, I wanna briefly talk about Amazon SageMaker, which is a full suite of managed artificial intelligence and machine learning services, which allow you to model a wide range of inputs. They're designed to make AI and ML accessible and easier to use, so that depending on what level of practitioner you are when it comes to things like machine learning, you're able to hit the ground running, spending less time worrying about getting your data in the right format or how exactly you have to code your algorithms, and a lot more time focused on what the real world and sustainability impacts of those results can be. Now, when we think about innovation and think about sustainability, you, you may have heard some things about the Amazon culture, mostly that we like to work backwards from pressing customer challenges or that we can be a little bit quirky. And these things are all absolutely true. In fact, when it comes time to sit down with our customers and look at how we can accelerate their innovation, one of the biggest things we do isn't just look at the technology, although I'm, I'm happy to talk through more of those 200 plus features and the services within those features like Greengrass, but the main challenge really tends to be cultural. And so because of that, there's a few things that uh, we typically, a, a few techniques we typically use when we're engaging with customers to look at how we can design pilots and projects to really help them address their sustainability initiatives. And the first one is selecting an achievable pilot with a measurable ROI. Select what you want to do and make sure that you can measure that impact. It's not about taking off something that's too grand or ambitious right away, but really being able to show a quick win. The second thing is to integrate it with your business operations. If you have key challenges that are serving as a bottleneck or blocking your flow in terms of your business operations, let's pick a pilot that really addresses one of the key aspects of that. The third piece is to gain operational experience and accumulate data. Every experiment, every pilot, every proof of concept is a learning opportunity. So by using those to generate data, which you can then leverage tools like QuickSight um, and SageMaker to figure out what those trends are, it's all about making sure you can get that data and store it somewhere that you can use it like an Amazon S3 bucket. Now, the fourth part here is repeat by using data to guide additional pilot projects and use cases. This may sound a lot like the scientific method and in many ways it's rooted in that, but after you've put together one pilot, you have some ROI, you're able to see what the results are, use that data, use the algorithms, figure out where your, ne where your next objectives are and where your next pilot's gonna be. Um, some of the keys to success that we've heard from working with hundreds of customers on these types of projects is number one, get buy-in from leadership at the very beginning of the process. It's great to be led from the bottoms up and from the boots on the ground practitioners. However, really having a strong stance from leadership can mean that there can be a lot of cultural changes that can happen for the entire organization. Um, number two is to get sustainability and IT in the same conversations. As we heard from that study from 451 Research, inherent, moving to the cloud inherently can lead to up to an 88% lower carbon footprint. That is a key piece of many customers' sustainability objectives. And so think about IT as another tool that you can use to really examine what your, what your footprint looks like and how you can optimize it. The third thing here, kind of like I talked about earlier, is select an achievable, measurable pilot. Focus on a short-term achievable win rather than trying to boil the ocean. This frequently means really unpacking what you want to do. 
One technique we like to use is the five whys. When you ask why, so, or when you make a statement about why something is the way it is, or you're trying to understand a system, you should be able to peel that back by asking why. Why this? Why that? And questioning assumptions five times to truly get to the root cause. The next key to success is provide training and support to the implementation team. Great intentions are great, but great intentions coupled with useful skills are even better. With AWS, if it's a pilot based in the cloud, we have a variety of free online trainings that your implementation team can use to become cloud practitioners, solutions architect, DevOps professionals, et cetera. But by having that training and support, you can really start to build momentum. And the last thing here is to set deadlines and create urgency to ensure it's delivered. Things that have a deadline and are being tracked are things that tend to be delivered. So making sure that these projects have some type of life cycle and are actively tracked is a key to being successful. That as well as getting leadership from the top down and all the other things I've talked about. Together, we found that some of these best practices really help support customers as they accelerate innovation through these pilot projects that lead to business operation improvements that ultimately lead to a positive feedback in terms of operational data. Now, one of the case studies I wanna quickly talk about is um, with Siemens. So the goal of sustainable construction is to reduce the industry's impact on the environment. The demand is expected to create pressure on strategic resources that are essential to the building process. These includes energy, raw materials, and water, not to mention pressure on human resources as construction projects use the world's largest workforce. Now, according to the UN Environment Program in 2017, the construction industry has the greatest opportunity to affect environmental issues due to buildings, environments, major share in energy construction and contribution to global warming. A specific AI use case that land lease is looking for is intelligent buildings, buildings that can self-optimize their operations and all encompassing building management systems to better serve their inhabitants. The data collected from these digitally enabled assets can be used to assess trends and design the future of the buildings. Now, by partnering with Siemens, we were able to build their digital lifecycle platform for smart buildings on AWS. This was able to establish digital twins of building buildings on MindSphere, the Siemens IoT operating system. From there, they could develop value-add services like optimization of energy and space usage, while also adopting that DevOps culture and practices and development teams, something I talked about in the previous slide. By digitally building technology businesses from the sales planning through to the operations, they were able to reduce innovation and deployment cycles, saving 50% in energy costs, 20% in maintenance cost reductions, and 15% higher customer satisfaction. Um, and before we wrap up, I actually want to talk about one more case study, and that's Anji. We worked with Anji AWS did to move its data from silos to create the Common Data Hub, or the CDH. It's a custom-built data repository using a globally distributed data lake and analytics solution on AWS. Anji has collected over 95 terabytes of, set of data set up in their Common Data Hub with over 351 projects globally. Since implementing the Common Data Hub, Anji's renewable fleet of wind farms, solar farms, and hydroelectric dams has become significantly more efficient and furnished up to a 5% savings. Now, these are just a few of the case studies here that I wanted to call out that really tie together Amazon and AWS's commitment to sustainability through some of the resources that we talked about earlier, as well as through some of the cultural pillars and keys to success. So with that, thank you all for joining us today. Please go ahead and leave your questions in the chat. We, if we cannot answer them now, we are happy to share our contact information and we look forward to following up with you offline. And with that, I believe we are headed into a break. So thank you all for joining us and have a fantastic rest of your day. Hello, so just a reminder, everyone. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Marilyn. Uh, just if you could please type your questions in the Q&A and both Liz and Marilyn will be able to answer you via the text. If you could both read the questions, Liz and Marilyn, and then uh, provide the answers. Thank you. And I think there's one question already from Carl, Liz, if you may want to address that one. 
There are quite a few questions already, two or three already, yeah? Happy to, and we've, we've put some questions in the chat. Uh, Carl's question was about AWS plan for open footprint platform. In general, though, as, as we teed up, we're all about working backwards to really understand what our customer customers are asking for. And at this point, we're really still in listening mode with a lot of it, trying to figure out what customers, how we can help them, what their key priorities are. And then from there, we'll figure out the best way to engage. Um, so hopefully that answers some of your questions. Also happy to take some of these offline.